the Boston Celtics about to head out on a gauntlet of a West Coast trip. And I'm answering some of your mailbag questions on a Wednesday Locked On Celtics. I'm so hyped right now. Anything's possible. Oh, my mama. Oh, my mama made it, Anything's possible. Rain and Jay's back with the vengeance. Back. All the real Celtics fans in attendance. Ooh. This is the truth like 34. Yeah. This is like walking in the garden when you hear the roars. The crowd goes crazy. Most in-depth coverage on the daily. Mainly podcast royalty. The content kings. When you talking about the franchise with 17 rings. Focus like Danny at the deadline. Global with it. Got a local feel like the red line. The blue line. The green line. Play it in between time. I'm going to throw my C's jersey on in the meantime. And press play. When the F's done, I can't wait until the next day. Trying to stay in tune with the C's. That's the best way. Melly. Welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making the show your first listen every day. Lockdown Celtics free, available everywhere podcasts exist, including YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube show. Uh, you can get every episode. If you've missed one, you want to go back, you can go to lockdownceltics.com. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Boston Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All Time All Stars, and I hope you can buy one of those wherever books are sold. Today's show is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is a new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions you don't want or need and can even negotiate better deals on those you want to keep. I got mailbag questions. People send in a ton of mailbag questions all the time uh, through johncorrales.com slash mailbag. And I just keep getting them. I really should do a better job of just answering them, just responding and I and then working a few more of them uh, in. I didn't expect to get this many questions, but every once in a while, when you got a couple of days off like this, I will put a mailbag podcast together just to answer some of the questions. So that's going to be coming up over the course of the rest of the show. But first, I do want to get into some of the news that came out of Celtics practice, which wasn't really news. Um, Ennis Cantor spoke for a while about becoming a citizen and the political stuff. That's, that's not for the basketball podcast right now. That's something completely different. We did talk to Emi Odoka a little bit. First of all, for the Philly game, the only person on the injury report, which is amazing, only one person on the injury report, and it's Jalen, who's questionable with that hamstring recovery. He's just going to be questionable for a little while, and that's that's how this has gone. Every day that he's been back starts with him being questionable, then he tests it out just to make sure that that tightness on game day isn't too much, and he's played. They've ramped him up. He's playing more minutes, so until he's absolutely 100%, he's going to be questionable. But that means that everybody should be available to play, which would make it interesting. I don't know how many minutes Ennis Cantor is going to get. People have asked a few questions about Cantor. I'll get to some uh, a little bit later. But overall, he's he's been over the past couple past couple of days a, a positive past couple of games. So we'll see. Oh, I'm sorry, Ennis Freedom. I got to look respect his decision. It's Ennis Cantor Freedom. His name is his last name is officially Freedom as of Monday. So Ennis Freedom is uh, a positive here. So, but I don't know if he's going to play. Like one of the things that he said, and I have to refute this. He had that that tweet that said he hasn't gotten playing time. It, it kind of insinuated that he wasn't getting playing time because he was taking strong stands. And then after he and Ime had a conversation that it was just about basketball said, suddenly I was getting my playing time. And I think that that's a, a pretty short sighted way to look at it. That's also the time that Robert Williams got sick and got hurt with the, the knee issue. So you were down, the Celtics were down a big and they needed a big and Cantor played and they and it worked. But let's not pretend that this the political stances were because were the reason why Cantor wasn't getting playing time. And this Cantor wasn't getting playing time because he's generally not very good anymore. And in this, in the past couple of games, two, three games, he's he's made a positive impact for sure. And so that's a surprising positive impact. But there are very easy ways to exploit Cantor. Now, let me 
fold in the first question of the day here from Rita, who asked a question on Twitter that I thought would be applicable to this. And she said, if I remember correctly, Embiid really attacked Time Lord and fouled out, and he fouled out of the game last time. Do you think Freedom might be, might or should start and bring Time Lord in when Embiid goes out? Or is it too political to adjust the starters? And my response is regular season, you roll with your guys. You roll with Robert Williams. You roll with um, Al Horford. If those are your starters, then you roll with your starters. And then you make your adjustments after that. But I think in the regular season, it's all about doing what you do best. What is it that you're trying to accomplish as a team? And you leave some of those personnel adjustments to the side. And, and in the course of the game, you, you want to start by seeing, can Robert Williams handle this? Can he handle this job? Or is it still an issue? That's number one. And secondly, this is, you know you have that adjustment in your pocket. So let's just, just go with your starters. Try to continue to do what you're trying to do, especially offensively, because a lot of the focus for the Celtics right now is offensively. Let's see if Robert Williams and Al Horford and the, this regular starting unit can really build some cohesion offensively. So you want to you wanna have them react. Can Joel Embiid, who had a big game coming off of COVID, but can he hang with Robert Williams and his hard rolls to the rim? What's Embiid going to do? Let's challenge Embiid's wind. Let's challenge Embiid's you know, ability to guard the Celtics doing what they do offensively. So it's a give and take. And if Robert Williams is getting destroyed again, then he's getting destroyed again. Then you put Ennis in there and you go in that direction. May, there might be a role for Ennis in this game. But I don't want this to become uh, – Ennis had the – you know, political stuff, he wasn't playing. Then he had a conversation with Ime Odoka, and suddenly he was. That timing, if, if no one got hurt, you wouldn't have been playing. And that's, I think, just the, the fact of the matter. It's not a per- – like, that's just the fact of the matter. So uh, – but he did talk, and, you know, look, congratulations to Ennis Cantor. You know, on a personal level, I said this in yesterday's show. I'm, I'm the son of two immigrant uh, Greeks who came over – and are naturalized citizens. And I know how hard that is. And that's, you know, good for him for, for taking that step. The other part of practice is this gauntlet that the Celtics are going to be going through, starting with the Sixers on, you know, a Wednesday night. The, <laughs> the Celtics are playing the Sixers who are 11-10, struggling early, but could, you know, with Embiid back, things could turn around. They get the back-to-back Friday, Saturday against Utah and Portland. Tuesday, Wednesday, Lakers and Clippers. Uh, LeBron James just entered uh, COVID protocol, health and safety protocol. So I think he might miss that game. Somebody had said, oh, he's not going to miss this game. This isn't like the ankle thing or whatever. This is, um, this is health and safety protocol. He might not miss the game. I don't know exactly what his COVID situation is, but – he, he might, he, he has to go through protocol. It's not up to him anymore. It's up to passing the rules of the protocols and the NBA is not going to say, Oh, well, we need, we need LeBron for Celtics Lakers. Who cares if he's still contagious with COVID? No, 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 no. That's not worth it. So, but they have that. And then they play Phoenix at the end of that road trip. They play Phoenix twice. They play the Clippers twice. They play the Sixers and Milwaukee twice. <laughs> they play Golden State, New York, Minnesota. All of these teams that they play have a winning record except for Portland. Ah, but Portland is 9 and 1 at home. The only team with a better home record is the 11 and 1 Golden State Warriors. So which is going to be challenged later. I'm recording this before the uh the Warriors Suns game, but are they are they on the road? I gotta double check if that's on the road. Uh, no, it's on the road. So that will not be challenged. So, but so the Warriors, who the Celtics will play, um, are the team's best, uh, the league's best team this season. And the the one team with a losing record, the Trailblazers, are nine and one at home. 
which means they're one in 10 on the road, which is gross. <laughs> this is a tough, tough stretch. The Celtics are going to be challenged. We're going to see exactly what they're made of here. Is that Toronto game, as I mentioned yesterday, all, all that ball movement, is that something that the Celtics are going to continue to do, even against these tough teams? Or are they going to get drawn into a lot of these individual one-on-one -on -one things? Because there are a lot of individual one-on-one -on -one matchups to be had when the Celtics are out there against Utah and Donovan Mitchell and Portland and Damian Lillard. And even the Lakers without LeBron, there's an Anthony Davis. There are guys out there. The, the Clippers with Paul George. I mean, there are one-on-one -on -one matchups for, for these guys to pursue and, and try to battle. And maybe that's how it works out sometimes. Some games just work out like that. Tatum gets, gets hot and he gets going and maybe the passing gets put, put aside for a game. If that happens, does it come back? That's the other thing. Does that come back in, in the next game? You say, okay, great, Jason, you, you outdueled Paul George. You dropped 45 and you weren't, you know, dropping eight assists. But let's see in the next game if you're still hunting that and you say, oh, well, now I'm scoring again. So pff, bye, ball movement. Or do you get back to the ball movement and play the right way? So there are a lot of lessons to be learned on this road trip. Up next, uh, I'm going to get into some of your questions, including uh, more on Jason Tatum and why his rhythm might be impacted. That's coming up after I talk to you about Indeed. Uh, there's always going to be a debate between LeBron and Jordan. And when it comes to hiring your all-star talent faster, the GOAT is Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring partner that gets you what you really want, a short list of quality candidates as fast as possible because you can do it all, attract, interview, and hire all at Indeed. Do not struggle on your own to find quality candidates. Why? Indeed can help you and hire the right person right now. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process so you can find talent with the skills you need through tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. I used to have to hire people. I used to have a stack of resumes and I used to go through and try to, okay, this one's a maybe, this one's a yes, this one's a no. If I had something like Indeed on my side, maybe some of these uh, hires I could have made uh, would have been a little bit faster. So go right now to uh, indeed.com slash locked. You can get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com dot com slash locked. That's a $75 credit at indeed.com slash locked indeed.com slash locked offer valid through December 31st. It's the end of the month. Hello. December is here. Terms and conditions apply. Need a hire. You need indeed need a protein bar. You need built bar. Now Thanksgiving has come and gone. Maybe you feel like you put on a couple of extra pounds. You want something healthy to snack on and not the leftover pie that you brought home that's somewhere like 300 calories, grab yourself a Built Bar. Many of them have 150 to 170 calories. Some have 130, 16 or 17 grams of protein, low carbs, low sugar, it works with a keto diet. They have a lot of non-nut options. If you've got a nut allergy, they're covered in 100% chocolate. This is the time of year where you're gonna get snacky. It's dark, it's cold. You want comfort food. This is a great time for when you're still struggling to get to the gym. You say, okay, here's my treat. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to come back. I'm going to have a built bar and it's going to be delicious and good for you. And it's going to really calm that urge. Uh, if you missed out on the Black Friday deals, no problem. You can go back and use the promo code LOCKED15. You're still going to get some really, really good deals. And if you go to built.com, there are going to be plenty of deals out there still. So get 15% off with the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Make your second listen the Locked On NBA podcast. It's Wednesday, so I will be hosting Locked On NBA with Jake Madison, covering all the big games, including that big Golden State Phoenix game and that Knicks Brooklyn game, talking more about LeBron entering COVID protocol, all the big stories in the NBA. So check out Locked on NBA, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Let us get into some of these uh, mailbag questions. Again, johncorrales.com slash mailbag 
for your uh, submissions. Starting with Greg, Tatum's shooting woes, do you think his rhythm has been impacted by Ime's style of play? That's perhaps why he has gone back to some of his isolation moves. Uh, hopefully, last night's performances from a couple of days ago, uh, where he did shoot well, uh, but he was a plus 13. Honestly, it must be tough to move away from what he's always done successfully and learn a new style. This is true. Jason Tatum is being challenged. He's a 23-year-old who's being challenged to do, to do something uncomfortable. When you are uncomfortable on the floor, then it could impact your shooting. I think this definitely has some level of impact. Look at, look at everything that, that's happened. New style of play, new way to call things. And then I think over the past few games, they've, they've kind of gone back to some of the other way of calling fouls. But the first 20 games have been very let them play. Frustrating for him to not get foul calls that he thought would have been fouls in past games. So you got that. You got a new basketball, which, hey, these guys, that, that does mean something. And people have said that's, that's a, a, a factor. So I think all of that, if you start out cold, it's not that that is all like reasons why. I think they're all reasons why things have gotten worse. Like if Tatum started out hot, if he came out in the first few games and just came out and hit 45% of his, his shots, uh, 45% of his threes, and was, was playing well in the first couple of games, I think then that would have carried on. But once you come out cold and all this other stuff is, is involved, I think that made it a lot harder for him to pull out. He had a good stretch against some bad competition. And now the question is, can he get it back? He will get it back. I think, I think he will. So I'm not too worried here. But yeah, trying something new, being told, hey, you, you got to give the ball up to, to make, it, make, make everybody on the team better. He's, he has been more of a rhythm guy. Get myself together. That's why against that San Antonio, against San Antonio, he's trying to find his rhythm. And Ime's like, don't do that. Don't do that. And that, that does have an impact. Uh, continuing on this theme a little bit, David asks, is there some truth to the statement that Tatum receives much more criticism than Brown when Tatum has actually progressed much further in that aspect of his game? Do you think it's because of our expectations for each player? Tatum, in my opinion, has been a willing passer, but the, set, the stats sometimes don't back that up because guys aren't making shots. Um, I can recall at least five times in the Spurs game where Brown would get downhill and draw two in the paint, and he, would, he took contested, contested shots instead of kicking out to shooters. My point is, I believe that Brown is much more of a ball stopper in the offense uh, than Tatum. And so I think, let's start, start with this. Like I said in yesterday's podcast, it's hard to judge Jalen in these last few games, and it's hard to judge Jalen overall uh, this season. But I, I will say that I think uh, Jalen has progressed a lot as far as a, a passer and a ball mover, and I think he's been able to find guys uh, come off screens, find, find guys in opposite corners. I thought he's, I thought he'd been doing a good job earlier this season. Coming off of the the hamstring, I think he's just looking more to just focus on the few opportunities that he gets. To, maybe he is looking for a shot a little bit more. I'm going to let him get fully healthy before I start really criticizing Jalen. Which means, I guess this plays into Tatum receives much more criticism. Well, this season he does receive much more criticism. Jalen's been out for almost half the season at this point, he, he missed a significant portion, probably like 40, 45% uh, right now. But I think that played into who gets more um, criticism. Also Tatum is playing so much further off his normal percentages that it's so much more glaring. I think really Jalen has been getting a ton more criticism and Jalen has been the one that's made, bigger strides. I think from their rookie years till now, I think Jalen has added a ton more to his game. This is the biggest stretch of Tatum's kind of abilities, like taking what he's had and really kind of ugh, that, that is 
happening now more so than it ever has. They've always tried to play towards Tatum's strengths. Jalen has always been asked to do more, guard up a position, guard down a position, stand in the corner. Now don't stand in the corner. I think Jalen's been asked to do a lot and he's grown his game a ton. Uh, I think in the end, both are going to find their fair share of criticism, especially Jalen. If Tatum goes down for any amount of time, then, and Jalen is the primary guy, then he's going to get a fair share of criticism because he's going to be the guy always out there and trying to lead the team. So uh, I think the, I think both of them, and you make this point in your question, uh, there seems to be structural changes to our offense that need to be made to opt- optimize our personnel, but it would require complete buy-in. Everything in the NBA requires complete buy-in. Everybody has to be on the same page. Like this is, this is so hard, I think, to like you cannot succeed in the NBA if you have any one person on the team really going for a different goal than anybody else. It's just not possible. You have to, um, you have to have both or everybody on the team going towards the same goal. If you're not, then that's going to make you worse than your potential. That's just not going to be something the Celtics uh, or any team can handle. We're going to get to questions up next about Evan Fournier. There's just a consistent kind of stream of questions about Evan Fournier and his contract. That is coming up next. First, Bet Online continues to be your number one spot for all the sports action this season. They've got you covered all season long, more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football season continues to march towards the playoffs, basketball season continues to march on as we head into December. So head on over to the new updated desktop or mobile site. Sign up today, and you'll get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with the promo code Locked On. Make sure you're using Locked On to get that 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. From basketball, football, hockey, boxing, UFC, down to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. I have been talking recently about crack sauce, C R A I C. It's a hot sauce or a variety of hot sauces made right here in Massachusetts, Lowell, Massachusetts, by a Celtic season ticket holder, local Massachusetts people working, living in Massachusetts, Massachusetts farms to grow their ingredients, Massachusetts employees. It is the ultimate local type of business that I think is so important to support. And what's great about these is it's not just some bottle of hot. It's, you know, those bottles of sauce, which look, I love, I love heat in my food. So some of these are just, see how much you can put in, see how hot you can get it on that Scoble scale. And, oh, you know, oh yeah, I got it this hot. I'm sweating and crying and all that stuff when I'm eating. That's not what you want all the time. With crack sauce, versatile, multidimensional sauces. I just made chicken soup. I'm Greek. I can cook. Like we're supposed to cook. I just made chicken soup and I used the 40 Shades hot sauce, which gave it a beautiful flavor and just a hint of heat. It gave that little extra something that I know when someone's going to taste that soup, they're going to say, wow, what is it? What's that thing? You know, you can feel it, but it's not overpowering. That's what really makes it great. And you can cook with it. You can put it uh, on any, you got different styles that really can be great. If you're looking for a unique gift for a hot sauce lover, this is going to be perfect. Perfect. Go to crack sauce, C-R-A-I-C sauce.com for 10% off with the promo code locked on. Make sure you're using that promo code locked on to get that extra 10% off. You're going to get a great gift set of all four of their flavors, the Mill City Red, the Brian Burroughs Curry, and the Golden Pumpkin. They all have different flavor profiles, different levels of heat. The, The hot sauce lover in your life is going to love it. It's not going to be something that they expect. 10% 10% off with the promo code locked on. Support that local business and that Celtics season ticket holder at cracksauce.com. Hey, thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make the Locked On Bets podcast your second listen? Just told you about Bet Online. 
Locked On Bets can maybe help you win a couple of bucks there with your boy Q uh, hosting the show and just they are just on a run of, of great, great selections. Lee Sterling's going to give you some real locks. Check them out wherever you get podcasts and uh, yeah, wherever you get podcasts. <laughs> Nathan says, uh, Evan Fournier's New York deal is three years guaranteed at $54 million with a $19 million team option for the fourth year. Isn't he the exact type of player the Celtics need? A shooter who can play make? Is he really a bad deal? Uh, if New York would take Richardson and Wancho and maybe a second, why shouldn't the Celtics make that swap? Probably means the luxury tax, but the Jays game could truly explode with a re- reliable marksman. Let me tell you something. If the Celtics weren't going to give him that contract this summer, they're not going to give him that contract now. And they're not going to move anything to give him that contract. Um, the production this season is in line with what he's, he's done before. Uh, I'll pull up his stats right now. His, his three-point shooting has been good. Yeah, 39%. And it, it kind of fell in line with his, his career is at 38%. He's averaging 13 points a game which, you know, it's less than his career, but he's in a different role. That's fine. If you look at the per 36 numbers, he's kind of in line somewhat, a little closer to in line with his career numbers. So the Celtics look at that and say, yeah, we knew what to expect. That's about what we expect. They're not going to have the buyer's remorse, the non-buyer's remorse. Uh, I think that Fournier is having a decent season. He had a, a stretch where he kind of got cold. He's, he's not exactly crushing it. In New York, he's having a good season, but he's also been benched for stretches in New York as well. So I think we look at that, and he's, you know, on national TV, he tends to kind of stand out. I think we look at that and we say, why? Why Why couldn't we have done that? And you're looking for a way to sort of correct what you perceive as a mistake. New York's not going to take Richardson and Wancho and a second-round pick. They're, they're just not. It's, it's, I don't think that that's going to be – why would they, they get off of him Already, I, I just I don't see it happening. I think Celtics fans need to forget about Evan Fournier. There's a reason why the Celtics didn't want Evan Fournier. A lot of it is financial. And when you say it does probably mean the luxury tax, then forget it. Forget it. Like, I, I just don't think long term, if you look at the long term, are the Celtics, is Evan Fournier the missing piece to a championship? or? Is it better to just try to figure out, can Aaron Neesmith give you that Evan Fournier type production? That's, to me, I would rather just say, okay, let's see if Neesmith can get get the same or similar level uh, of production. He had some at the end of last season. We saw potential coming into this season. Okay, he's fallen off the charts. He's struggling right now. I'm not writing the kid off. It's too early. It's, It's too early to write him off. So I'd rather just stick with that and see if he can fill that role. That's, that's the better way to go. Donald, with how well Grant has played as a starter, would bringing Horford off the bench along with Schroeder be a good option? I've mentioned this before. I will reiterate that. Yeah, I, I do like that idea. With Grant shooting the way he has and entering 50, 40, 90 territory, which is crazy, I think Grant as a, a, an option there as a starter does make sense. I think there is some level of sense to start him instead of Horford, especially if Horford looks like he's starting to wear down a little bit. And I'm not saying he is because I think defensively he's still done really, really well. But against the Spurs and against Toronto, I just saw him missing a lot of shots and a lot of shots short. And that's, I'm starting to wonder if they might be riding him a little too hard. He is so important to the Celtics' success that I don't want this stretch of too many minutes on back-to-backs to end up taking a toll. He came out of that OKC situation really, really well. He started the season thinking like, yeah, I found the fountain of youth. He has said he feels good. As long as he feels good, then great. But we do have to be cautious 
with this guy. They, they do have to be somewhat conscious of the slightest little, slightest little kind of drop in his athleticism, in his uh, stamina, any sense of added fatigue, they have to dial it back. And maybe they just do that by shorter opening stint. You start him and he plays four minutes, get him into some rhythm with the team, sit him down for a few minutes and bring him back with Schroeder. That could be a way to do it. You get Grant in there. Maybe Grant doesn't start, but he gets starter type, sort of pseudo starter type rotation minutes because you don't want to mess with your starting lineup too much, right? You're going into the season and there are so limited opportunities here that you don't want to make these, these big grand decisions to change your starting lineup unless you really feel like you have to. So I don't think playing around with it is the, the best idea all the time, but there is merit to the thought process. And maybe, maybe there is a way to get Grant more run with starter units or mostly starter units. And then you use Horford a little bit differently. Maybe you limit his overall minutes just to preserve him for the long haul. I just want to make sure they're preserving Horford for the long haul, because if they're not, then they've got, uh, they've got issues. He's, he's that important. He's that important. And I, I, I want to make sure that he's not taxed too early. All right. That's the show. Uh, next podcast will be coming after the Sixers game. So uh, I will uh, be post game very late after the Sixers game as usual, but post game podcast. And then we'll wrap it up at the end of the week with a, a look ahead to the big road trip. So make sure you're subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, if you have, then I would love a recommendation. You know, word of mouth is so big. People don't do things without recommendation. So share the podcast, tell them about the YouTube, tell them about, you know, how often the show comes out Monday through Friday, share it, tell them that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.